Hi, this is Brendan Cronin. Congratulations, you've got through your surgery and you're sitting in recovery, which is always reassuring. Hopefully you didn't remember too much at all from the operation and you're sitting there quite comfortably now. The recovery area is actually a pretty nice place. The nurses are very helpful, but you do need to sit there for a required period of time, just as per health guidelines. Recovery are very helpful. You can ask them any questions you have. I often have suggestions about the food for them, but they don't seem to think my suggestions are the best idea around. Managing your post-operative pain relief is really important to make the recovery swift and comfortable for you. Your eye will be completely numb and paralysed now. That's because of the block that the anaesthetist has performed. That will wear off about 8-12 to 12 hours after the procedure, so it's really important that before you go to bed, even if you have no discomfort at all, that you take your analgesia. The tablets that you've been given are probably Nurofen and Panadol in the one tablet called Maxagesic. If you have an issue with either of these ingredients, you should just take the other one as appropriate and ensure it doesn't interact with any of your other medications. But most patients, really by taking these before they go to bed and potentially in the early hours of the morning if they wake up uncomfortable, really recover very, very quickly and don't have too much discomfort at all. It's exceptionally rare for someone to need any stronger analgesia than this. And I find those tablets just tend to make people ill and feel worse anyway. Most people really only need to take three or at most four doses of the Panadol and Neurofidin combined, and by then their eyes completely comfortable. So what should you expect in the first 48 hours? Typically you'll come to see me or one of the optometrists at the Queensland Eye Institute the morning after the procedure. In the 12 to 16 hours between when you have your operation and when you come to see me, a lot of patients say it's like they have allergies, their nose is quite dry and they're sneezing a lot. That can just be because of the oxygen that goes up your nose through the procedure. It can dry out your nasal passages and really make you quite uncomfortable, almost like you have bad hay fever. The best treatment for this actually isn't to take antihistamines, it's to steam your nose up, often hopping into the shower and really steaming things up so that the mucous membranes are moistened again, resolves those symptoms. Some people have a very white eye the next day and some people have a very red eye. It's perfectly normal either way. It will recover regardless of how it looks on the first day. It's quite common for people to have a little bit of double vision in the first 48 hours after the operation. That's not that anything has gone wrong. Sometimes the anaesthetic that numbs the eye and paralyzes the eye so that it doesn't move during the operation still keeps one or two of the muscles in the eye a little bit paralyzed and not working well for a day or two. That double vision can be a little bit uncomfortable, but it should settle down very quickly. Most people are pretty bombed out the day after the operation, even if you feel quite good and are quite comfortable. Most people find they just want to go to sleep. I think that's a perfectly normal reaction. The adrenaline from the prospect of having had the surgery wears off, and even if your eyes are a little bit uncomfortable, you just want to lie down and keep them closed. That's perfectly okay. It's also completely normal to have very blurry vision for at least the first day or two after the operation. For some patients, this will improve after the pterygium has been removed, and some people will feel that their glasses no longer work very well after the operation. That's because the pterygium can pull on the shape of the eye, distorting the shape and changing the strength of your glasses. When that shape is restored to a more normal curvature with the pterygium having been removed, some people's glasses aren't the right prescription, some people have better vision and some people have worse vision, but it's all perfectly normal. You'll be given some post-operative eye drops to use after the operation. There's an antibiotic to ensure that the surgical site remains clean and doesn't get infected, and also a steroid anti-inflammatory drop to ensure that it heals nicely without too much inflammation. Wash your hands before you instill your drops and make sure there's three to five minutes between them so that the first drop has had time to take effect and to soak in before the second drop is instilled. You only need one drop in the eye. The sac and the surface of the eye really don't hold any more than one drop, so it doesn't matter if you use more than one, but there's really no benefit over and above just using one drop at a time. Often the most inflamed part of the eye after pterygium surgery is actually up underneath the upper eyelid where the donor tissue is taken that's then glued over where the pterygium was. So to combat this, a lot of patients find their recovery is much nicer if they pull their upper eyelid up and make sure some of the anti-inflammatory steroid drops really get up underneath that upper eyelid as that's where the inflammation is and so you get more benefit if some of the drops really go up to that area where the donor tissue was taken from. You don't have to rule your life by the eye drops. If they're four times a day, roughly breakfast, lunch, dinner and bed, it doesn't matter if the gaps aren't religiously regular, occasionally you'll miss one. That's not the end of the world, 
but the nurses in recovery will give you a tick box sheet with your information pack. That does make it much easier to comply with the post-operative drop regime, or some people will use apps on their smartphone that remind them, and you can tick off that you've used the medications as required. It's really common to develop a little bit of temporary dry eye after the pterygium operation that tends to last for about two to three months. Patients don't say their eye feels dry, and they say their vision fluctuates, they need to blink to see clearly, their eyelids are droopy or that their eyelids feel heavy and they want to close them. Or a lot of patients actually complain of watering of their eyes, which means that their tears are out of balance. Tears are meant to be oily, and so if the oil layer is a little bit reduced, patients will often say that their tears trickle down their face and they think the opposite. It's actually that the eye is dry and that the tears are out of balance when their eye is watering. In your post-operative medication pack, there'll be some artificial lubricants or artificial teardrops for you to use to resolve those symptoms. Most patients don't use them too much until their Maxidex drops finish because you're already on a lot of drops and the Maxidex tends to be quite a nice lubricant anyway. It doesn't matter what lubricating drop you use if you run out of the one that you've been given. Some conditions will exacerbate dry eye, including sleep apnea, Botox and other periocular surgery makes things worse and postmenopausal women are much more prone to developing dry eye after any kind of eye surgery, but including to regime surgery. So what will your eye look like after the surgery? First of all, most patients will have a droopy eyelid and this can last for about three months. That's just where the donor tissue was taken from being a little bit tight and a little bit inflamed and the eye being dry. It's very common, but it does settle over time. Getting those anti-inflammatory Maxidex drops up underneath that upper lid certainly helps that droopy eyelid. The first eye after surgery, some patients will have a white eye that looks quite normal and some patients will have a very red eye that looks like it's bled underneath the surface. Both are normal, it's perfectly okay either way. So even if your eye was perfectly white and comfortable the day after the operation, it often changes between day 3 and day 10 after the procedure. And what changes is the autoconjunctival transplant. So that's the skin graft that we've effectively done on the eye. The tissue that's been taken from up underneath your eyelid and glued over where the pterygium was. This tissue doesn't have a blood supply. So in the first few days after the operation, it sends out a message to the body to say, hey, I need, I need oxygen, I need a blood supply and your eye will create arteries that grow into that little tissue. These arteries bring the important nutrients that our body needs to function, and you'll see that and perceive that as the area getting swollen. It looks quite raised up and blistered. It's very common to get bleeding underneath. Or as you can see in these pictures here, it looks raised up and blistered with a little bit of yellow fluid, and that's just products from your bloodstream that are going into that tissue to nourish it and to help it to heal. This blistered area can really look quite raised up and people worry, they'll say, I feel my graft is coming off. It is definitely not the graft coming off. It's a perfectly normal part of the healing process, but it does look a little bit yuck for a couple of weeks. It settles down quite quickly over about three weeks. The red goes from red to orange to yellow. And as the yellow disappears, your eye should go to be completely white and completely comfortable. And that area will flatten out and look very nice cosmetically. So what can you do and what can't you do after the pterygium surgery? Just be sensible. It's perfectly okay to do yoga. There's no problem at all. It's perfectly okay to lift weights. You may not want to do it to this extent though. And it's perfectly reasonable to go riding your bike and cycling with your friends, but definitely not if you're going to do it like this. People always ask me about the shower and can they wash their hair? Yes, you can wash your hair. Just don't get shampoo in your eyes so that you want to rub them. Basically, anything that you did in the shower before the surgery, you can do in the shower after the surgery. The things you really can't do after the operation. It's important not to swim for four weeks. The dirty water can get in under the graft and cause an infection. Eye makeup is dirty, it often grows bacteria, and removing it could really damage the graft and the cosmesis of your eye. And of course, just try and keep things clean, keep it sensible. There's no reason to go into the garden and shovel manure. Yes, you can do some gardening, but please just try and be sensible and keep that eye as clean as you can until it's fully healed and looks nice and white again. Genuine emergencies after the pterygium operation are actually really, really rare. If you run out of your prescription medications, don't worry. You don't need to call me at 2 o'clock in the morning. Just call the rooms and we can arrange a repeat prescription for you. There's certainly no urgency to that. It won't matter if you miss your drops for a day or so. I'm certainly more than happy to answer any questions or concerns you've got, though. So if you do need to contact me during business hours, call the Queensland Eye Institute on 3239 I don't tend to be able to answer my phone at work. If it's a weekend and it's after hours, it's perfectly okay to send me a text message. You'll have my phone number in your post-operative pack. 
please, I get a lot of text messages. I won't have your phone number in my phone. It's important to say who you are, what operation you had, and when you had it done, so that I can look up your file, log into my computer, and see what you've had done, so that I can give you an intelligent and uh, appropriate answer to your question or query. And of course, if you feel that you have a genuine emergency, please call the Queensland Eye Institute during the day, or weekend or after hours, just call my mobile number. That's why you have it. In terms of prevention of further ultraviolet damage to your eyes, it's important to wear hats, to wear sunscreen, and also to wear sunglasses. You'll be given some sunglasses in your post-operative pack. They're not very stylish, they're not very cool. They're excellent at blocking ultraviolet light, but you certainly don't have to wear those ones. We believe that Turidia are formed from ultraviolet light coming in at the side of the eyes. So some side protection in sunglasses is important, but we don't want you to be really uncool. We do just want you to wear something sensible and stylish, but ideally with a little bit of protection at the side, not something like these. Often pterygium pull on the eye, changing the shape, which means they distort the vision a little bit and change the strength of your glasses. So removing the pterygium can also change the strength of your glasses and the vision. That change can take a couple of months to settle down. So yes, in the first few weeks, your glasses may not be spot on for sharpening up your vision. And how bad that is depends on how large the pterygium was. Typically, it's important to try and wait about eight to 12 weeks until you go to see your optometrist for a nice new pair of glasses so that the prescription has stabilized. Of course, that's a great opportunity to also get some sunglasses from your optometrist at the same time. I appreciate that the prospect of having surgery of any kind, especially eye surgery, can be a pretty stressful experience. Hopefully we've been able to make it as a relaxing experience as you could have. And the guys in recovery have really made it quite comfortable for you that you get to have something to eat and drink. You have to stay for a set period of time and then you can head home. If you've got any feedback at all, please let me know. I'll be catching up with you in the future to ensure your recovery has gone nice and smoothly, but hopefully it's been a fairly pleasant experience.